Welcome to Discovery Indie Film. I'm your host, Jeff Howard, and today is a Four Questions episode with director Sarah Prickrill. Sarah made a film called Family A Love Story, which won the Grand Jury Prize for Documentary at Film Invasion LA in 2018. It's an outstanding documentary, so you should absolutely go to discoveryindiefilm.com and watch it right now. It's embedded on the website, and it's only 18 minutes. 18 wonderful minutes. But in the meantime, you should listen to her four questions. She has excellent taste in film, which makes me look forward to her future work even more. All right, enough setup. Let's talk to Sarah. I love these questions too, because these are things I don't really think about. And it's funny yeah. for me to make a list and go, oh, wow, if that's what I'm drawn to and I want more of that out in the world, it's like I should be creating more of that. Um, so favorites. Okay. Favorites. Favorites. Princess Bride. Have hundred, seen it a hundred times. We'll watch it a hundred times. It's just something that makes me feel good. Amelie, I think, is absolutely brilliant on so many levels. Technically, story, just it leaves you feeling so much and is exquisite. Um I could watch Sleepless in Seattle a, a billion times, too. I just think it's so sweet. And Eternal Sunshine for the Spotless Mind. I just love films that make you question. And I don't know anyone who watched that film that didn't walk away and wonder, would I do that? You know? I just, I love his filmmaking, too. The, it, it's so unique. Oh, it's a, it's a great film. Great. Uh, all four of those are great. Yeah. Oh, and also Clue. Have you watched that recently? You're not the only Clue person. And you're it, not the only... Uh, now I should look up and tell you who else put Clue. Yeah. I watched it, rewatched it recently. I totally holds up. It's just super entertaining. I, I haven't seen it since it was in theaters. Yeah. I, so I only saw one ending, too. There's three endings. Right? Yeah. And it's hilarious. And I thought, gosh, there's something about all these films that kind of like leave you... They're unique storytelling, and they just leave you feeling good. You might be soulmates with my girlfriend. Those would be her four. Oh, really? Yeah, those first four... Um, Omni, yeah. Eternal Princess Sunshine, Bride, Princess, Princess Bride. Bride. Those are hers. Those are hers. Wow, we would be best friends. Yeah, I guess so. Or have movie night. Oh. Good list. It's a Wonderful Life. Oh. I watched that a million times. It was the only VHS we had when we, my mom first got a VCR when we were kids. And I've seen that movie a million times. And I do, do think it's one of those things that was underrated, actually, back in the day because it actually got panned when it came out. It, it because it was so dark and back then in that era. But if you watch it now, it, it really holds up. It's so, um, the performances are just so brilliant for one. Um, and again, it's like eternal sunshine. It's one of those concepts. It's like this, what if concept that I think I always love. It is pretty high concept. Huh? Yeah. Would you want to do an underrated? Uh, Yes. I don't think a lot of people have seen Force Majeure. It's also would be on, on a favorite list. I don't know if you've seen it, but the, the storytelling in it is so subtle. It's a Swedish film. And it's like, it's such this like low grade anxiety. First of all, it's gorgeously shot. You watch it every, every frame is so beautiful to watch. So aesthetically, but it's a slow moving film that is, I think, so brilliant. And I didn't, I know now, I think it's on, Netflix or Hulu, you can watch it for free, but it is so well done. And I love that filmmaker. And I was thinking, God, why? I wish I had heard more about it. I think it won a bunch of awards in like Europe and stuff, but we don't hear much about it here. And I would say, yes, watch that film. It's done so well. It's about a family um, that goes on vacation together. I think you'll really enjoy it. It's they they uh, an incident happens and then the whole f- film is kind of the unraveling of the truth about the incident between a couple uh, within a family and yeah, so it's like cool. so awkward family dynamics that you feel like you're cringing. I, it, seriously, it's so well done, really well done. Sounds great. Yeah. All right. So you want to do overrated? Um, I was really thinking about this and I had a hard time, but. Every, there's so many people as far as romantic comedies that love Love Actually, and I do not, which people always are shocked because I love romantic comedies, but there's just something about it that doesn't ring truthful to me, and, and so I just never connected to it. And do you like the other Richard Curtis ones, maybe? But that no, one just doesn't... Oh, you don't no. like any of his stuff? Yeah. Probably a little superficial, I would think. Yeah. I feel like, again, it feels like this sort of cookie cutter box. And then also the performances and the scenarios. I just am like, what am I watching? I just never connected with it. It's funny. I haven't seen it since it was in theaters. 
But you're not alone. I think someone. I also think that's another one. That is it, has is been it my new friend? <laughs> Yeah, you might have you might have some some real serious cinema buddies. <laughs> I love it. The people who love Princess Bride and really don't get love actually. Yeah. I love it. And then do you want me to talk about my lesser known film? I think Absolutely. everyone should watch. This is a doc. I love docs as well. It just made me think of all the uh, narrative films, but um I don't know if you've seen The Act of Killing, but I think I don't even characterize it as a doc. It is an brilliant documentary about the Cambodian genocide, but it is um, shocking that it ever got made, let alone distributed. Because I watched it maybe three times every time with my mouth wide open. And it's about the Cambodian genocide, but it's actually about sort of a study of the human psyche. Because these um, guys that are in control over there, they did this mass genocide. They're actually wanting to make a propaganda film like celebrating it. And so they wanted to make a narrative about how they're like gods for like doing this thing. The people committed the crime, committed the crime, real people asked a doc crew to come over and, or actually a film crew to make a, a propaganda movie for them. But it turned into a documentary of behind the scenes of what they were doing to make this narrative. And then watching the lead guy watch himself on camera recreating these atrocities like and what is happening to his brain as he's objectively seeing himself for the first time it's shocking and half of the list of the crew is unknown 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 they don't want to be attached because it's all just like a right, big, their name's a, not even on it for safety. Yeah, it's just like a big like gangs over there of they're literally were hitting up kids of the people they killed to be extras in the movie like and to get money from them to create the film it's just shocking on so many levels but then it's a mix between an art film where it's so gorgeously made like they're recreating these like women dancing in waterfall i mean it's like it's so wild but then at the same time it's the story of following this guy who wanted this film made but then he's watching himself do the thing and it's really so having a mirror held up to himself completely transformed him. exactly so I, w- I don't even consider it a doc film i feel like it's just its own piece of art that i tell everyone to watch not a lot of people have heard about it i guess but you can watch it online i, I can't remember if you have to itunes it or amazon prime or or something but it is worth watching you know i try to not mention the girlfriend too often And when I say girlfriend, sometimes I'd rather say life partner. But the point is, when the person sitting across from me names all the same favorite films as the person that I sleep next to, I don't know, I just had to say something. And more importantly, go to discoverindiefilm.com and watch Sarah's 18-minute documentary, Family, A Love Story. It's right there with her podcast. You can watch it, and then you can listen to her interview. And while I'm wrapping up all the other house cleaning, remember that if you want to hit Discovery Indie Film on social media, it's at DIF Wins. That's on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, at DIF Wins. That way you can stay up to date on all the important stuff like Film Invasion Los Angeles that is going to be in June and deadlines are coming and going as we speak, and the Sherman Oaks Film Festival that comes up every November. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for listening and have a happy new year.